from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm here at the Compass at VCU once more to spread the message of freedom and to spread a little anarchy while I'm at it. Um, of course, if you remember the last video that we put out on the 8th of October last week, I had uh, an altercation with a police thug here on campus. And that uh, not only did he snitch on me, you know, there's actually, as you were following the video, he admitted that nobody really reported me or having a problem with me being here, even next to the election table. Actually, they were fine. They were, they were okay with it. It was the cop himself who snitched on me uh, to verify to see if I had begged begged uh, ahead of time to see if I could have permission to stand three feet away from this circle. This circle right behind me apparently is where freedom of speech is permissible, uh, but if you're outside of that you have to beg like the tax slaves that you are. And so for me, I was like, I don't know which is worse, a cop that snitches on you that uh, goes outside his bounds of having officer's discretion. You know, I thought you are supposed to protect me. Right? I thought you are supposed to serve me, protect my life from, from tyranny, not serve tyranny, not be the, the, the watchdog of tyranny. And uh, I don't know which is worse, that one or local businesses snitching on each other to the state to, to hopefully close them down, um, you know, being the, the sheepdogs to, to the state. And so that's, uh, that's, that's kind of what happened. So this is pretty much a recap of, uh, of that incident. And you know, it's kind of important in whatever capacity that you can that you kind of fight against that fascism. You fight against that tyranny and whatever level of life that uh, you, you have in front of you, like writing essays against the, the norm, right? Uh, trying to put in all these ideas in whatever way and capacity that you're able to. You know, it's very important to stand up against this kind of tyranny because you give them even three feet, you set up a precedent for them to take even more. And eventually that circle will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, I mean, me here at VCU, I've had already, uh, I was a student last semester, spring, in spring semester here at VCU, and I have already had problems with um, the ways that they kind of instill and try to teach this kind of fascist um, ideology with the students. I had a professor called um, Professor Randall Sleeth, uh, business organization. He got upset because he walked into the classroom and the students were not quiet and sitting at their desk and not uh, giving him, the, the, I guess, the respect as you would uh, coming into that door. So he got angry at the students at the classroom and he told them, listen, I'm going to walk back out, I'm going to come back in again, and all of you stand at attention. Stand at attention. And so he did. He walked back out, he walked back in, and as soon as he did, everyone stood at attention. And he says, all right, you may all sit down. And then he points right there in the corner of the classroom, in the front row, points right at me and says, did you stand at attention? I said, no. No, I've been here ready to, ready to learn 15 minutes ago. I'm not here to play military games. And then he calls me ungrateful. Right, that's, that's how these fascism ideas kind of leaks in into the educational program here. The classes that you're paying for. Right, this is, this is the different ways that they find different ways to control you and to manipulate you into being nothing more than, than, than part of the herd. Right, part of the, the, the sheep that they want you to be. And other instances for me, just an, <laughs> another one that happened uh, last semester again with the criminal justice class where uh, my professor had invited a detective to come in and talk about uh, life, how employment works, being a police detective. And so the police detective's coming in and talking about her stories and everything's fine except to the point where she acknowledges that some of the things that she enforced for victimless crimes, all right, interesting, but then when she gets to the point of starting to I laugh about it, start about the humiliation that she has caused a lot of people, especially in terms of uh, busting them for prostitution, uh, that wasn't okay with me. Uh, so I raised my hand and asked her a question, I said, well, how do you feel about what you're doing, uh, especially since you already mentioned that it was a victimless crime, you already initially stated it was a victimless crime. How did you feel about putting, kidnapping and dehumanizing people and throwing them into cages for victimless crimes? And of course, uh, she took that as uh, like, how dare you talk back to me? So the guest, the professor invited uh, to speak for the class, the class I paid for. So she starts uh, approaching me aggressively. Her tone raises. She's armed too, by the way. So she starts marching at me. She starts throwing red herrings out there. And for me, I can't help it. I was like, well, all right, let's argue. Uh, so that's pretty much what ended up happening for a few minutes until the professor just kicked me out of the classroom. Right, me, the student, not not the the detective who's harassing her own students, not the the person, her guest that she didn't pay for for that class. I did, but it's me, the student, gets kicked out for for daring to ask questions. And uh, so that's what I mean. A lot of the different ways that they this this society of statism tries to control you and put you down and put you in your place. And it's very important, whatever capacity that you can and have, to stand up to that, stand up to that tyranny. Right? I'm not saying risk yourself being thrown to the cage. You know. Do whatever you can up to that moment. You know, I, I, the message is very important, but you as the individual, it's much more important. So you can come back here the next day and continue to spread the message. Um, 
And that's really it. I mean, in regards to the to the last incident, you know, I, I, I took the time to actually look at what the guidelines were and apparently, you know, you can get in trouble if you don't know the rules. It's not an excuse, it's not a justification if, uh, if you go and present that to the judge, hey, I didn't know that was against the law, right? But it doesn't excuse the cops. The cops are very much excused in that uh, they don't have to know the rules. They don't know have to know the, uh, the arbitrary opinion backed by their own gun they have to enforce. And in here, in the guidelines here, it states, if the demonstration, page five, section B, if the demonstration is not one of the preferred locations inside that circle, the group participating in the demonstration will be asked by the assigned university official, not by a thug, to move to one of these locations. If the group refuses to move, the demonstrators may be allowed to continue at the location, provided that the demonstration is being conducted with the intent of the definition of orderly. And being orderly means you're not being destructive. I'm not being causing destruction. I'm not intervening in the pathway of people commuting here at this compass. So whatever the matter, obviously I didn't want to move. So pretty much if the cop's going to pull out a piece of paper, some kind of jargon that he pulls out, it's like the sheepdog that he just that he is, just listening to his master, so commanding him what to do. Uh, you know, it would behoove you to actually read up into what you're actually supposed to be doing here and leave everyone the fuck alone, especially when they're talking about freedom of speech here. So with that, hopefully you're enjoying this context. Share and subscribe if you can, and I'll see you at the victory party. So that's the hidden violence behind government, this matrix, this organization only knows how to solve problems in one way, it's a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus a plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I and many of my friends here already share. So what are your thoughts on that? You know, you're saying that the violence is, you know, coming from the police. But I mean, I don't feel like, you know, too common. Like that's actually, you know, resorted to. Okay. Well, uh, the thing is, even like I, like I still have a need for security. I want security. I want rules. I want all. I want a lot of these things. But then that's these are the services the government has monopolized. They have a monopoly on law, so they don't allow a polycentric legal system. They have a monopoly on, on judges, on courts, on security. I don't have the freedom to cancel or, or unsubscribe or withdraw my own money or even have the freedom to compete and provide a better service of security. It's not going to be abusive and harmful to you, the consumer. Right? So that's what government is. They have a monopoly on services. Right? And these monopoly on services, they force upon you to, to accept and to pay for whether you want them or not. Right? So objectively, that's what government is. They even have a monopoly on first class mail, delivering pieces of paper, right? <laughs> I never talked about that, yeah, I guess so. All right, so you're not allowed, no one's, yeah, like DHS, uh, UPS, or FedEx can only deliver packages, but they cannot compete in the market of delivering pieces of paper, right? Uh, if they did, then, you know, finally we have competitive choices, cheaper options, they won't have to consider closing down Saturday, the USPS will be $60 billion in debt. Um, I guess something more familiar would be Social Security, right? You never consented to that, that was before you were born. That that's another force service on you that you'll never have in your lifetime when it's time for you to retire. It's a lot of unfunded liabilities. A lot of these things that led to Detroit to collapse. Um, because there are, there's no competition. If there's no competition, these services remain stagnant and idle. There's no need to improve. Right? And that's pretty much what happens whenever you have a monopoly on anything. The cost always goes up and the quality continues to depreciate. Um, so I'm pretty much out here just saying like this moral position that you and I already share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Like in science, cations and anons, and means without, archy means rules. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rules. So we can still have society of rules, it doesn't mean without rules. We can still have rich, diverse communities of preferences. We can have an apartment complex building that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. <laughs> right? But at least we can finally be free to, to live our lives without fearful of being ashamed because of our preferences. Right? We can still have security and roads, we can still have all this wonderful stuff, but provided in a voluntary basis that we already do in our day to day life. We don't use violence to solve problems, but unfortunately, that's the only way government knows how to solve problems. So without enforcement, how do you provide, like, you know, if you just need to think, like, 420 friendly and not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how do you provide the distinction to keep those two lives right. separate? Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, great. Uh, you see this all the time, like, at um, competing nightclubs. Right? Yeah. They have their own bouncer, they have their own rules, right? And then most will say, look, we have better happy hour specials than they do, right? Oh, or like when you go to a, a food court at a mall, 
um, the most aggressive me uh, demeanor that they would have against you would like, look, free samples, free samples, right? Trying to compete to serve your preference. Uh, they even have provide free security at malls, right? On the segways. Um, golf course communities even has security there. Uh, Disney World has their own security, <laughs> right? Uh, and they're not really competing against King's Dominion or Six Flags, um, but they're just there to kind of enforce those rules. But like before you enter that property, or before you go to the nightclub, you look at the rules, all right, I can send I agree, and you enter and have a good time, right? And most of the rules are pretty much just don't be an asshole to other people <laughs> so that's that's not bad of a rule but at least these would, these would be victimless crimes though they won't enforce victimless crimes right um, like like even even with cannabis and show me the victim right a victim can't be myself if I voluntarily chose to do it myself right there's no well it's a victim against the city of Richmond great I'd like to face my accuser who's the city of Richmond <laughs> right yeah so how, how do you how do you distinguish that so for the most part it's just a lot of abstract concepts that government forces upon you so so it looks like you're you're hurting the community great so I like to see the community right you can't show me your friends your family Americans or even policemen without showing me individual people you can't show me the city of Richmond without showing me individual people right because only individual people exist so it would be in the same way that you would actually give consent to those rules, right? Well, you look at a nightclub, ah, I don't like those rules, so I'm going to go to this one instead. Or even now have the freedom to compete and provide a better nightclub with a lot more lax, lenient rules, right? So that's, that's what I mean. So you have different enforcement, different rules, uh, different ways to cater to you, right? And that's pretty much all businesses are trying to do. You know, we provide the best coffee, you know, we provide the best security. And that's pretty much what helps uh, eliminate a lot of the um, abusiveness. Because the moment that one business tries to be abusive, like uh, Netflix tried to raise their prices overnight last year, people are like, oh, fuck that, cancel, yeah. subscribe, go to Hulu, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's what you won't have. But you can't do that when, when the government's abusive. They'll say well tough shit <laughs> yeah, tough <laughs> say, shit. You, yeah. Have no choice. you have no choice yeah this is your only security this is your only first class mill you don't have the freedom um so that we're just pretty much trying to act, trying to encourage people to <laughs> turn away from government let's turn to our community let's create a free market community on volunteers right and uh i have pamphlets if you like yeah, yeah. <laughs> We do, yeah, it's uh, gonna, it gives me some really to think about. Yeah. We do monthly freedom gatherings, a lot of philosophical discussions, and uh, I mean, we don't ascribe to utopia. We want there to always be problems. I mean, that's the least room for improvement, right? Utopia, by definition, seems like stagnation and idleness. Like, all right, we're done. We don't need to improve anymore. Uh, so we wanted things to keep improving, but at least it'll be voluntary, right? Uh, you can't improve upon the USPS, right? They don't allow competition. So, and that's what I mean. I still want security. I want all these wonderful stuff, but in the way where the consumer's in charge, because I'm giving you my money in exchange for these services, right? Thank you. Of course, my name is Cal. No, no, no. Actually, I waited on you two at Chili's. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Everything up. I was like, whoa, that's Sam. <laughs> nice, Good nice. You guys. Well, take you. good care. So that's the hidden violence behind this matrix, behind government. This organization only knows how to solve problems for one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I and my friends here already share. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, all right, great. Uh, so, so this more position then that you and I already share against using violence to solve problems. That's called anarchy. Like right. in science, anions and canines. An means without. Archy means rulers, like monarchy. One political ruler. Anarchy means without political rulers. So we can still have rules. It doesn't mean without rules. But that's something government has a monopoly on too. They have a monopoly on law, on judges, on courts, on security, on roads, even delivering pieces of paper first class mail. And no one's allowed to have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or even have the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's not abusive and harmful to you, the consumer. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, what are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. yeah. I like to hear about this stuff. Yeah. Oh, I'll have pamphlets if you like them. Sure. Yeah. All right. Great. You don't need to study on your own and architecture. Here we go. Thank you. Of course, of course. My name is Cal. Sammy. Sammy. Pleasure to meet you, Sammy. Take good care. So that's the hidden violence behind this matrix, behind government. That this organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus a plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I and my friends here already share. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? What are my thoughts on that? Um, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Um, I, I, I feel like isn't there isn't isn't government sort of a necessity in other ways? Not so much just to enforce to 
enforce laws. I mean, I guess that is what government is, but um, it seems as though laws probably are necessary. Right, right, right. Um, and sometimes it's it's not just violence on violence. It's like, <laughs> or, sorry, it's not just violence coming out of nowhere to inflicting on these poor people that are just going about their lives. It's violence that is being used to protect other people from, right. from potential, you know, violence inflicted on them. Right. Um, law abiders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think that it's definitely, there's definitely, it's not, it's not clean, it's yeah. not super slick, but... And then the necessities, the areas where they tell us why we need them, those particular areas, they have monopolized the services. Like, I still want security, I still want rules, mm -hmm. I still want post uh, first class mail, judges and court, I still want all that stuff. But government then has monopolized those services. Yes. And which you don't have the freedom to cancel, withdraw, unsubscribe, we even have the freedom to compete right. against those monopolized services to provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. Right. Right. I still want laws, but they have a monopoly on law. Yes. So they don't allow a polycentric legal system, right? What, how, what would that be? What would that look like? Yeah. Uh, it would look like in the same way like you you go to an area where there's a lot of nightclubs. Each one of them have different rules, yeah. right? Each one of them also has the free security that they don't charge on you, the bouncers, okay. right? Uh, it's kind of like if you go to uh, a mall, they have particular rules there too. Uh, you know, no saggy bottoms or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the security is not going to harass you and they don't even charge you for that, right? Uh, so, well, maybe going to a golf course community and living there to also provide security. So you can have competing communities. The preferences. So you can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly and one across the street that's not. Mm -hmm. Essentially, right? if you have something privately owned property, the government coming in and telling you what you can do or what you have to do on your property, that, that wouldn't happen. You right. So you're saying, on my property, people can't smoke marijuana. Right. No, they can't. It's illegal. That wouldn't be happening. There's always some yeah. sort of. Well, there is choice in sort of. There's choice in governments as the well. The illusion of choice there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they say, well, it's the lesser two evils. Well, fuck, if it's evil, then let's acknowledge that it's just being evil. And here's option C. You don't need government then. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, so what, what voting does uh, in the political system, it forces the majority preference onto everyone into a geographic region. So it's the majority over the minority. Mm -hmm. So like utilitarian, they'll say it's the greatest good for the majority, but it's also the greatest evil for the minority. Mm -hmm. Right? So they're just forcing preferences. They can't really claim moral authority to say this is good or bad. Yeah, that's they're just now just forcing your opinion and your ideas onto other people. True. Right? Yes. Uh, so this more position though, like to the point know, that you and I already share against using violence, mm -hmm. um, against using problems, solving problems with violence, that's called anarchy. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in science, anions and cations. And means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. So we can still have rules, right, outside of their monopoly of law. So it just means that uh, we can have these rich, diverse, awesome communities competing to provide, to cater to your preferences. Mm -hmm. All right? You can still have security, you can still have roads, you can still have all this wonderful stuff, but in the same way where you, the consumer, are now in charge. Right? Like Netflix, trying to raise their prices overnight last year, and people are like, oh, forget that, cancel, unsubscribe, go to Hulu. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But when the government is very abusive with the services they force upon you, and you don't have a freedom to unsubscribe or cancel, they're like, well, we have, um, you know, we have immunity, you can't really fire us, you can't really, we can't go bankrupt. Um, that's like social security, really right? That's another yeah, service before yeah, you were born. You're forced to pay for, but yet when it's time for you to retire, you'll never have, have a single dime of that. So like, so what's my like takeaway? What's your what's your end? The end game. End game. The end game is freedom, and the end game is to realize um, that these these problems that we these, that we want to solve can never be solved through government. Like even even if it's cannabis. So what if they legalize it here tomorrow? Seventy five years. It's not a measure of success to finally gain one scrap of our freedom, but to have lost so many others in the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather just let's turn to our community then. Turn away from government. Turn to a community. You'll find that we already share these fundamental values for for nonviolence, for equality, for freedom. Mm -hmm. that we actually use our real voice. Government wants to say our voice is a piece of paper, it's a chad, it's a lever, which you, which you use in secret though, every four years, in a booth, in a curtain, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't actually use it to talk to each other about these problems, mm -hmm. about these these conflicting things that we, we need to solve together. Mm -hmm. And to solve in the same way, we, we don't use violence in our day-to-day -day lives to solve problems, so let's let's do that, let's continue with that. We also don't think like, the government should really end overnight. Yeah, so since it kind of has to fade slowly away with people saying, oh, we really don't need that, so we're just not going to. So it's a peaceful like, transition. It's not, just yeah. Right now, I really think people wouldn't be ready to understand that there are other decisions. Like, 
great yeah. place. I mean, so it's just, you know, talking to each other and realizing that we don't need so Do you think that something it's something that we have needed and we've outgrown? Yes. Okay. Okay. I know. Okay. Cool. Yeah? All right, cool. Let me give you uh, some uh, pamphlets. Um, and here's another. So, like, you can't just say, like, State violence is bad, but the violence between each other is okay, right? Mm, yeah. You have to universalize it to also include the children. The violence among children is, is not good also, mm -hmm. right? We have to, we've kind of grown that, you know, spanking children only teaches them that violence is a way to solve problems when they grow up. Right, right, right. Right, so this is why we also pass out peaceful parenting pamphlets and um, along with the, the other pamphlets. Okay. Yeah. I'll take another look. I, I, uh, I feel like there's more to it than, than this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, yeah, I'd like to figure that out. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Cal. Elise. Elise, pleasure to meet you, Elise. Seriously, I think people ask us questions helps us to consider things. Yeah, yeah. Talk about it or realize, oh, we're approaching that, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's educational for us. Too. What's your name? Sarah. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. What 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 are you guys making? Oh, uh, so it's a YouTube channel we have. It's, oh. uh, it's pretty much trying to turn to a community and uh, trying to find answers to a lot of these problems that we that we, that we do address. But the thing is, with government trying to say we have the answers to everything, we come to the position like we don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. Like not one person has all the answers. Mm -hmm. But as a community, a lot of different individuals, we can come up with something awesome and something interesting, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I think that a lot of a lot of government is is just sort of a commercial system. Yeah. Uh, that wants to proliferate itself and a lot of people would be I guess literally out of a job if there was no government right. um, but a lot of these jobs though there would wouldn't really be a job like delegated like, like locally yeah sort of. yeah like DAA who needs a DAA mm -hmm. who needs an ATF uh, who needs uh, a, a lot of them like ABC extortionists like food safety like there would be private companies that spring up and say hey we're here to provide it for you yeah you know, someone that company is like oh gosh I really want people to buy my stuff I'm gonna go talk to them and pay for them to come and give me that like that stamp so they know according to that group everything's fine and then it's who's the authority then like you you, 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 you just see this yeah. business like they've had good integrity like consumer reports mm -hmm. right if they give like a cheap review and if all the all their competing uh, agencies to try to provide consumer reports we're like hey look they messed up here go with us instead we're not going to screw up look we have 12 years of integrity you know if you find anything wrong with our review you know we'll give a thousand dollars to you right, right. Uh, so different ways to incentivize to provide good integrity right um, otherwise people just rate you down like on ebay and I say look bad business bad service don't do business with them i guess so there's there's a more uh, open open um, communication system yeah, yeah. like how that will happen is well like you know there needs to be obviously developed pretty clunky I bet yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> there's, there's people out there that have great ideas all the time I'm mm -hmm. sure somebody Lots of right. They're probably like that. Right. Mm -hmm. How did you guys get started with this? Like, uh, started last year here in Richmond. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen oh. you around, oh. <laughs> like, here right, right, a lot. Right. But um, I guess a lot of us comes from a lot of different backgrounds. Um, a lot of us used to come from a lot of variety of different political spectrums. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just, um, I guess, we will have talking a lot of... Through talking. Yeah. Talking. Yeah. yeah. And also, that, right there is a, YouTube, a list of YouTube videos, this, okay. which are really, I mean, like, they've helped us, too. So. A lot of good allegory of the cave uh, stuff. Do you think that people giving feedback in terms of, like, our own actual government now is, is sort of a lost cause? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, the thing is, uh, I mean, put, put yourself in their place, you know, their constituents, it's not really you, right? Uh, I mean, send them a letter, the leave them a voicemail, their mm -hmm. constituents are the corporations, right? right. They want you to help finance their campaigns. Right. Uh, and that's one thing, though, that you have to understand, without government, though, there's no such thing as a corporation. All a corporation is, it's a piece of paper backed and enforced by government to allow you to escape personal liability, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So without a government, no corporation. It goes back to the way it used to be, where we're held personal liable for our own actions, mm -hmm. All right? Okay. I mean, that's the way a lot of things used to be. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, cool, cool. guys. Nice All right. to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, Elise. Yeah, see ya, take care. Right, so that's the hidden violence behind this matrix, behind the government, and that this organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus a plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I, my friends here, already share. That's true. I agree with that. What do you think about that? I agree. Yeah, I agree. So this moral tradition then that you and I already share against using violence to solve problems, that's called ana. Like in science, anions and canons, and means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. 
But what government then is objectively is that they have a monopoly on law. That's all you're gonna get. They might have they have a monopoly on the, on the services that we want. They have a monopoly on judges, on courts, on security, first class smell. On, on currency, on roads, on schools. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or withdraw your resources, or even have the freedom to compete against this monopolized service and provide a better service. It's not going to be harmful and abusive to you. Yeah? But hey, I got to I got pamphlets, then let me pass it on. Oh, pamphlets. Yeah. Is this going on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, YouTube. Good, I didn't want to run for office anyway. <laughs> Take it easy, man. Liberate RBA!